Good morning, Tallahassee. It's time to wake up War Chant on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Here's WarChant.com's Aslan Hajavandi and Corey Clark. Hey, wake up. It's Wake Up War Chant, 97.9 ESPN Radio. Brought to you by For the Table Hospitality. I'm Aslan Hajavandi alongside Corey Clark. Corey, it's Friday. We made it. How are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you? We did it. We did it, everyone. I mean, can we you got believe- to the weekend. I can't believe it. I mean, all the, all the adversity that we had to overcome... Uh, simply amazing, man. Uh, just really proud to call you a co-host, a uh, a, a peer, um, a co-worker. I just, I don't know, man. Just it's it's crazy to be here. You know, we we made it. It's just it's crazy. Well, look, man, and I put my pants on one leg at a time, like everyone else. It's just after I put my pants on, I'm awesome, and that's the difference between me and most people. And you know, so this week was no different. I I shined even when adversity hit, and I made I made the whole thing go. Yeah, what's going and on? We won a national championship. Yeah, for we got Florida State national championship this week. A couple people commenting on the YouTube page, um, stoked about Jesse Warren. But guys, can we can we get back to football, please? Is there anything to talk about? I don't know, guys. I, mean, I don't know. Don't think so. But we're gonna try. We're gonna figure it out. It's uh, part two of the Renegade Express. We'll go to all of our listener questions via the uh, talkback line, which we should also probably get sponsored too, Corey, so we can really start just capitalizing on this. Um, this movement. I mean, this show, this, this behemoth. Movement. This thing is a behemoth. Can't stop, won't stop, man. As a famous man once said. I By the, the way, I, uh, I, the post on War Chan about Willie Taggart buying lunch for all the campers. We haven't talked about that. That was pretty neat. Okay, let's get did to you it see then. That? Well, I, I haven't done a lot of research. I did see one thread that said apparently that story started on War Chant, then made its way over to Twitter, and then somebody grabbed a screenshot of it on Twitter and then brought it back to War Chant. And that's the thread that's currently going like viral right. on the tribal council. So we we exported it, then we imported the story back into uh, the ecosystem that is Warchant dot com. But if it's true, which uh, there's no reason to think it's not, super cool, super classy move by uh, by tags. Yeah, you know it is. It's, it is, and, and if people don't know, I guess they had their uh, what did you say? It was like the junior first Knowles grade camp. through eighth grade yeah. football camp. Yeah, junior Knowles they call um, it first through eighth grade. And I guess Willie Taggart was out there on Monday or Tuesday, and or Wednesday. I guess it was. It might have been Wednesday, and uh, no Tuesday. Yeah. And said, "Hey, what are we doing for these kids for lunch?" And they said, "No, we don't do that. We don't serve them lunch. They know we don't serve them lunch." And and he said, "Well, that's unacceptable." And then apparently, out of his own pocket, which I wouldn't see why it wouldn't be, he bought, I mean, dozens and dozens of pizza for the kids to eat when they were done with the camp. And then also, I guess the next day had a bunch of uh, sandwiches delivered that, you know, from all intents and purposes, we don't know for sure. I don't know if it was out of his own pocket or not, but it meant something to him. You know what I mean? I, and I, he didn't do that to say, Hey man, I hope somebody takes this to war chant and types it up and then it'll be on Twitter and then it'll go back to war chant and I'll look like a hero. He just did it because he's a human being with a lot of money. And he didn't understand why uh, kids would be coming to that camp and not being fed. Even though the parents knew about it ahead of time that lunch wasn't provided, he was like, no, no, that's not how we're going to be doing things. It's just, again, it's a small thing, and I will, I'm going to couch everything I say for the next two Gotta years. Got to win some games, right? We get it. If he, if he doesn't win, it does not matter. But, Gotta man, win. he is a – there's some humanity there, which is just nice to see. I mean, what, are you trying to insinuate that John James would not have done something similar? I don't think John James would have thought would have it would have ever occurred to him. I don't think I don't think if they came to him and say, "Jimbo, can we buy these kids lunch?" that he would say, "Oh no, get out of here! I got to go get my camo truck." He wouldn't have said that, but I don't think it would have ever even occurred to him to think about their lunch. You know what that means? Right. And maybe that's right. a, you know maybe that's a good thing that he's so singularly focused he doesn't care about a third grader eating lunch. But it mattered to Taggart. <laughs> And he made sure that those kids ate lunch. I, I mean, I just that's a that's a good sign because it's one of those things where you know somebody's nice when they do something nice when they don't think anybody's looking. Willie Tiger didn't do that to get patted on the back, man. He did it just because he thought those kids deserve lunch. It's a small thing. It's a little thing. I'm sure Jimbo Fisher has done plenty of nice things for plenty of people over the years, as you should when you have a ton of money. But still, it's just it's stories like that that make you think, man, this guy this guy gets it. He's just a nice person. At heart, he seems genuine, and there's some humanity there. Which I guess is important in a, in a college football coach because you still have to embrace them. I mean, it's not a professional as though we're close to it, but you still need to be likable as the head coach. And the pros, you can probably get away with being ornery and crabby and, and like Fisher was generally. But 
at the collegiate level, there still is that, I don't know, that, that, uh, that connection between your alma mater, or your favorite school that you want to like your coach. I mean, everybody wants to like their coach at every level, but I think at the professional level, you're more likely as a fan to be like, whatever, he's a jerk, but at least he's winning. Um, but I think, you know, at the college level, and especially if you're starting and you're new, um, it, it's good to sort of uh, ingratiate yourself to the masses by doing things like that. So, yeah, it was a three-day camp. I think they went from like 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So it is kind of crazy that they wouldn't even factor in giving kids lunch. I mean, come on. I, I mean, mean, I figure they just think if it ends at 1, you'll go get lunch afterwards. I guess But, so. you know, you, you're just paying for the camp. You'll be here four hours. Then you go do what you have. You can go eat whatever you want away from campus. But Willie was like, no, we'll have it waiting for you when it's – when it's over. And yeah, I mean, I just, again, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it's, it's just a nice thing. It's just a nice thing. He's, he seems like a, uh, a genuinely good person that that would, and again, it's, it, maybe it's all perception. None of us really know Willie Taggart. None of us really knew Jimbo Fisher, but that's a, I, I mean, I would think Florida state fans would be pretty excited about hearing a story like that. And remember, I know they had Jimbo for, well, he was, he was at Florida state for a decade and he was the head coach for eight years. But before that, they had one of the nicest people that has ever coached college football. So Florida State, it's not like Florida State fans grew up with a Steve Spurrier and an Urban Meyer. That's not who brought them championships. You know, that's not who turned their program around was, you know, Steve Spurrier. You can say a lot of things about him, but he wasn't what you'd call a very nice, warm person. And same with Urban Meyer. Well, Bobby Bowden was the nicest, the warmest person. So the Florida State fan base is used to that. So I think they probably want to embrace somebody that wants to embrace Embrace that that he isn't just a uh, a Sabanite. He isn't just a ro- a football robot. There is a there is some kindness to him. Yeah, go win a couple games though. That'd be nice, right? Win some games. Uh, yeah, maybe. And hey, it might help that Virginia Tech's quarterback isn't going to be playing. Yeah, what's going on there? He was even supposed to be going to the Manning Pasch Academy. I don't know if that's probably in jeopardy as well. I guess the the hubbub is that um, some sort of academic impropriety, possibly. Say that yeah, one that's five the, times that he's suspended indefinitely for an academic issue, um, and you know they, they, nothing's been said officially what that is about. But it could be that he's not eligible this year. It could be that he wasn't eligible last year. Who knows? Or we don't know what, at all what it is. But it's not great. Um, so if you're suspended indefinitely in June, it's not a great sign when you're starting when that's happening to your starting quarterback. It gives him plenty of time to uh, you know bounce back. You know, he can bounce back. Got all the got all the summertime to. Uh, Come back or whatever. His father uh, told the Richmond Times Dispatch that his son is still a member of the team, but the future of him is obviously up in the air. As of right now, Josh, still a member of Virginia Tech football. We'll know more in two days. It's too early to talk about this. So um, maybe we'll know something on Monday. But, yeah, that's that's a, a, a tough blow for the Hokies. And they also, as we talked about, I think, a week or so ago, two of their defensive backs who I think maybe even cornerbacks specifically, uh, one's out with a – Achilles injury. The other one, I think, was uh, did not make grade, so has had to transfer out. So, um, yeah, I'm not complaining. These people that post these things, like, well, I wish, you, I hope he's there. I want them at full. I want them at full strength when we play them. No, they're the same people. No. That, they're the same people that are like, oh, I want the Gators to be undefeated when we play them, and then you know, I want to ruin their season. No, let, let them be as weak and vulnerable as possible. This is. This isn't, um, I don't know, this isn't the Olympics, man. This isn't about sportsmanship and being nice and everything, man. It's all about winning, man, about getting them dubs. Get the dubs. Yeah, man, them. The Warriors didn't give their title back a few years ago when Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving were hurt yeah. and LeBron had to play him by himself. I mean, maybe, I, I doubt any of them would have been like, I mean, it went six games as it was. So I doubt any of the Warriors were like, man, I wish, I wish Kyrie and Kevin Love would have played. That would have been a real series. It's like, man, no, you just want to win however it takes to win. I mean, you know, that may... That, that's always been my mindset, too. It's like, no, you don't want them at full strength. If half the team gets suspended, that's good for everyone. All anybody cares about at the end of a season is if you won or not. Man. That's all anybody cares about. That's just, the, that's just the bottom line. They don't care how you did it. They don't care what was up with the team when it happened, who the team that you beat. They just want Ws. That's it. Yeah, there's no Gator so, fans. Yeah, man. Hey, no Gator yeah. fans talk about their first national title. I'm like, well, you know, I mean, work done was had the flu, so I mean, I don't really, I don't really count it. I really don't take a lot of satisfaction. I mean, no, no one cares, man. Just win the game, show up, be yeah. there. Yeah, none of them are like, man, I wish work done was healthy. That would have been a lot of fun. Or man, I wish, uh, you know, I wish Peter Bowler would have come back for the for '97. I wish we'd have gotten to play him again in '97. And I wish Randy Moss would have still been on the team. No, nah, man. No. Florida fans were really happy when Randy Moss got kicked out of school. But why wouldn't they be? You don't want to play Randy Moss. That would have been a nightmare. 
Not that this kid is the equivalent of Randy Moss at quarterback, but it's a big deal. That kid started all 13 games. And instead, you, instead of him coming in, you I would assume you'd have somebody making their first start. So that wouldn't be ideal for Virginia Tech. It certainly doesn't guarantee a win for Florida State. And we're, this is all speculation anyway. But, you know, if you had your druthers, yeah, of course you'd rather uh, play, play against a quarterback that's never played before. Yeah, so, I mean, looking through it even a little bit further, the Richmond Times-Dispatch as well as the Roanoke Times, neither of them say that he's suspended. It, both of them use the term uh, status up in the air. Uh, again, both of them, though, quote his father saying that, uh, you know, in the next few days um, he will know, they'll know more about it. But uh, in the story from the Roanoke Times, uh, it sums up the off season, the drama, rather, uh, up in Blacksburg. Uh, their defensive coordinator, Galen Scott, resigned amid allegations he engaged in an extramarital affair while on recruiting trips. Their top recruiting target, Devin Ford, picked Penn State over them. Wait, wait, wait. Well, he got fired for having an affair? Uh, that's yeah. Not like with a, not like with a student, just an extramarital affair. While on recruiting trips, Corey. Oh, I see. So he was using the the money, the recruiting money, to bring her with him. I guess. Or maybe she came to the nice hotels he was staying at on his recruiting trips. And maybe that counts. Oh, all right. I just yeah, you know, yeah, I just okay. you know, right. I mean, if he gonna, was spending money and lying about it, then sure. You're going to have to be the. I mean, there's a lot of pressure to put on you, but not too much because I'm just you know I'm in the gutter over here. Like you're going to have to be the ethical compass, the moral compass of this program <laughs> because these things don't bother me. I mean, listen, if I ever was married, and I want to get married eventually. I would. I'd be broken apart if my my significant other my wife ever cheated on me i would not right. cheat on my wife I, I i'm saying that but life happens no, but I'm saying, so if you if you were married right now yes say, say we're talking about seminal headlines okay and it came out that jeff hour cameron number two. like hour number two or that jeff or ira was you know i don't know having an affair with each other would they be fired well whose business is it of i that that was all i was wondering about is like is that a fireable offense to just be a uh a, a, a slime ball yeah, well, but I mean, if he's if he's using money, if he's using resources, then and he's lying about it, then yeah, of course. Like Petrino didn't get fired because he was having an affair at Arkansas; he got fired because of the cover up. Right, Heck, right, Petino, yeah, because you're lying. Petino didn't even yeah. get fired. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, my thing is, I, I don't know where, where is the where's the the line between. You know, I mean, like Andy Canizzaro, the head coach at Mississippi State baseball, who got fired after. We, I mean, he was you know, had, had an extramarital affair with a staffer. So, I mean, it wasn't like he used resources, but I think they said there might have been something involved there. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I mean, it, these are multi-million dollar enterprises and what? You're spending $2,000, $3,000 on maybe whining and dining somebody or putting them in a hotel or getting them on a flight to come see you. And like, that's, oh my gosh, how, how dare you do that? I'm not advocating it. I don't think it's a good thing by any stretch of the imagination. I just can't believe people lose their livelihood over these things, but... Um, well, again, it depends. On, it's all about context and, and, and everything else. And, and we, I don't know enough of the specifics to really even comment on it. I just assume there's more to it than just having an affair. Right. But either way, that's not a great look. In either way, that's a, or it's an awful look. In either way, it's been a really bad or, I don't know, tumultuous, like you said, offseason for Virginia Tech. Yeah, and then also their potential starting quarterbacks have been lost to Donis Alexander, to good, or lost for good due to academic ineligibility, and Jeremy Webb uh, due to injury with an Achilles injury. So, yeah, it, it doesn't just happen here. Everyone always talks about, you know, I feel like in Florida State, we're the only ones that ever have, you know, injuries in the offseason. Like, it happens everywhere. We just don't, we don't, we're not kicking and, and pulling up all the rocks and looking at everybody other's dirty laundry. But now we are, because every single day you have a one-hour show hosted by Corey Clark and myself letting you know everything that's going on. Now we're going to take a commercial break, because that's how this all works, and then we're going to take all of your questions that you asked us, and we're going to try to answer them to the best of our ability. Are you down for that, Corey? Woo! Yeah, man. Did that I'm, sound at all like Ric Flair? Not at all. you got to work on that. Okay, Just be the moral right, compass. Man, I'll, be the, I'll be the hype guy. I'll be the hype guy. You be the moral compass, all right? Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Sorry. Sorry, Wait, everyone. It's Wake Up Board Chain, 979 Spanner Radio. Coming right back after this. Stern pop-ups and video ads. Are you wasting your time again on clickbait FSU updates that are bloated down with ads? Yeah. And after crashing my computer, the information isn't even up to date. You're on Warchant.com. What's really going on with the Seminoles? For the real scoop, you'll need to get your own Warchant subscription. What's it cost? Free. There's a 30-day trial offer right now. You know I like free. Sign me up. Use the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Nobody has more accurate and timely information on the Knowles than WARCHANT.com. WARCHANT.com, your, your ultimate, ultimate Seminole, Seminole source. source. Wake up! 
Friday edition of Wake Up Warchant. He's Corey Clark, senior writer and columnist for Warchant.com. I'm Aslan Hajavandi, director of digital media for aforementioned website. The show brought to you by For the Table Hospitality. Father's Day is coming up, Corey. Uh, and people, here's what you can do. That makes everything easy and everybody wins. Um, a great little package going on over Warchant.com. If you're not a member, join. You can say that you're, you know, you're part of the family. So when I say, hey, fam, you can feel like you're part of the crew. Uh, right now, there's a special going on. If you sign up for an annual package deal with uh, Warchant.com, you get a $50 gift card to Garnet and Gold. Uh, they have all the FSU goodies they could ever want. You'll also get a 16-ounce stainless steel Warchant.com tumbler, and, and you'll get six free months added to your subscription. That's like a $50 value. There's also additional packages. If you're just going to go month by month, you'll get a $25 gift certificate and two free months added to your subscription. Uh, go on over to Warchant.com. Uh, to get details on how you can sign up and uh, take part of this uh, great promotion that is going on. FSU Dad, that's your promo code. Corey, uh, what's the what's the best Father's Day gift uh, Brady or Shan has ever given you? You know, uh, my phone case is pretty cool. I it's like a it. picture of me and uh, me and Brady from last year uh, after one of his baseball games. We're just posing for the camera, and he's in his uniform. And it's uh, actually the phone. It's actually the case on my phone. Yeah. The problem with it, though, is that sometimes people will see it. They'll look at it. They'll glance at it and they don't see Brady on, in it. So they're like, and I've been asked at least three times, wait, do you just have a picture of yourself on your phone, <laughs> your phone case? And then I'm like, no, it's me and Brady. And then they see that. Oh, yeah, Brady's in there, too. But they, they're drawn to that beautiful bald head. Yeah. So that's what they see initially. Super cool, man. Yeah, it gets that. But that was a good one. Yeah, he has it. You know, he's only nine, so he can't really get me anything cool yet. Um, and so, you know, but that was a, that was a nice, that was a nice, uh, that was a nice gift. I was happy that, uh, Shanna thought of that one. Yeah. Very nice. Good stuff. All right. Well, that's next Friday or next Sunday, right? Father's day U S open it Sunday. Is, yeah. It sure is buddy. All right. So yeah, there you go. Join the, join and the my program. birthday. My birthday is next week. That's right. What'd you say? The 14th? Yeah. Flag day, baby. Sweet. And the day before that's Tyler Holton's, which we'll forget. Uh, congratulations though. Tyler, he's gone. Probably right. Yeah, yeah he actually no. He, no, he, 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 he definitely was gone. gone. He said he was out. So, oh, oh well, sweet prince, I'll miss you, man. But it's all right, man. Frees up more lace for the rest of us here in Tallahassee. God, he's just a stud, <laughs> right. bro. He's just a stud. I don't man. know that you. I don't know that you we, and him were fishing from we, the same. No, pool. not at all, dude. Those baseball yeah. guys, man. Like we're a football country and all that, but the ladies still, man. They uh, they dig the long ball more than they do uh, the long pass or the long run because. Man, anytime I'd be walking out of the post-game news conference rooms after baseball games, like it's right next to the clubhouse kind of, so you'd have uh, their significant others kind of, uh, you know, loitering around waiting for them, and you're just like, golly. And they're all so nice and loyal. Like, they love their boyfriends. They have, like, the buttons with their boyfriend's number on it, and, like, they wear the shirt that's got his name on the back with the number. It's like, man, you know, it's so many perks when you're good at athletics. So many perks. When you're good at athletics, but when you're not, you just talk about it and hopefully, you know, you can just fool somebody uh, to spend the rest of their life with you. I'm not doing too well at that. Can we just talk about well, sports? You got again? time, though. You got time, my man. Yeah, not really. Anyhow, oh, not, don't forget, folks, at 3.30 today, you can hang out with uh, Irish Chauffel, possibly myself, but more importantly, uh, the national champion Lady Knowles softball team. They'll have a celebration for uh, the Lady Knowles winning the national title. First ever in program history. 3.30 over at Langford Green. It's free for everybody, right, Corey? Yeah, not for you. You have oh, to pay. Okay. And uh, we hope Ira's there. Uh, he's had some travel difficulties getting back from the great state of Oklahoma. Uh, a couple of weather delays have, have had him miss some flights. So at the recording of this uh, particular show, we don't know where he is, <laughs> what state he's in, or if he's even going to be back in Tallahassee in time for the, the softball celebration. Well, it's all right. You guys can go hang out watch the, uh, the he softball. Could've, he could have driven. If he'd have driven, he'd already be home by now. Who gets the last laugh now, Corey, huh? Who gets the All's last I'm laugh saying. now? All's, uh, people think I'm crazy for driving to the uh, Omaha for the College World Series. Who's laughing now? Yeah. All right, man, let's get to the questions. Uh, we did the subscriber questions. Today we'll get to whoever feels like calling on the hot back or the callback line, 850. Um, I forgot the number already. I'm going to stop talking. Somebody else can talk now. 30, 30 yaks, nine. Yeah. 30 yaks, Some. on two, on two. Right. Let's hey, go. Uh, do we know how many calls we got, and have you screened them? I have not screened them. Uh, we have about... Oh, you're just playing these live? Let's just... We're going to do it live! We got about a half dozen. All right. Let's get to it. All right. Uh, Aslan, Court, appreciate you guys. Give my boy uh, Heisman 20 the shout-outs on the show. Keep doing a good job, and uh, wake up. So, uh, Heisman 20 again. So... If there was hypothetical beef at uh, Wake Up War Chant, which member of staff would have the best distance towards his coworkers and who would get insulted the worst? 
Have a good one and take care, guys. All right, so if there was a, a, a some sort of strife here, uh, who would have the best disses towards the coworkers and who would get insulted the worst? I feel like, I don't know, Corey. For Is he some... talking about war chant or wake-up war chant? Um, he did say the wake-up war chant. So I feel there's... like he's got to be mean war chant, though, because the wake-up war chant is just you two. By the way, it sounded like he was doing an Obama impression at the beginning. And then transferred to like... that? I think it was a little bit Jimbo. I think he's the guy that's the Jimbo oh, okay. impression. I thought it was, yeah, that's what I thought, too. But then it sounded like, man, he, he, the way he was speaking so clipped, I'm like, oh, that kind of sounds like Obama. Yeah. Uh, Obama. Either way, it's it's perfect. Uh, I mean, I, obviously, I'm I'm terrible at that stuff. The Your mom is so fat disses. Um, Brady has a good one, though. Your mom is so dumb, she tried to climb Mountain Dew. <laughs> I've never heard of that one. That's a good one, right? Yeah, I like that. That made me laugh when he when he told me that the first time. And your mom is so short, you can see her uh, feet on her driver's license <laughs> picture. That's a pretty good one, too. So he's got a couple of doozies in there. Uh, so I could use those. I guess maybe I'd have the advantage because I have Brady's insults to, to get me through. Yeah, I think we would probably, out of respect, not go after Ira. Um, if we're Here's the thing, though. Ira, Ira cannot take it at all. <laughs> That's the one thing about Ira is he cannot take being insulted. Even people, obviously, like joking around, like just giving them grief. He all he he he's got really thin skin when it comes to that. Okay, the more you know. So anyway, so yeah, we don't. So don't you know? Don't play. Don't rib Ira because he doesn't take it all that well. All right. Next question. Ass man, Corey. (laughs) Wait, what? (laughs) He said, "Ass man," right? Not Ash man, but Ass man. The way – so Google transcribes it out. It actually says ask man, and it usually either says as long or ask man. So – I mean, ask man's not a terrible nickname. Uh, and it's – I think – Ask man in the coracle? And they're not lying. Are you, they are not kidding? lying. They are not yeah. lying. All right, let's resume the question. Do a great job with the show. But, hey, I got a question about the uh, Champions Club. Never see anybody sitting up there. I guess people could be inside, but is that – uh, Champions Club living up to expectations. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Thanks. It is. It actually is. I well, think. it's it's a polarizing topic because yes, it's making the money that they thought it was going to make, or or at least close to it. Uh, it's on pace to make the money they thought it was going to make a couple of years ago when they put it out, uh, or you know started it. But as we've always said, the optics of seeing six thousand or four thousand, whatever the empty seats are, however thirty. 3,000 empty seats in the end zone is not a good look, and they still haven't quite figured out what to do about it. So I, they are they are all inside, which, of course, they would be because it's awesome in there. <laughs> I will say that. They, they, we're not getting paid by the Champions Club to say this, but it is awesome inside, and it is an awesome area with a little plaza, and you can still see the game a good bit. But so – and there's beer back there and alcohol. You know, there's liquor. There's food. There's all that stuff back there that you'd want to be back there. Restrooms, it's cool. Uh, so in, the sept- in September, you're not, you're not sweating to death. So I get why people go back there. The problem is they're not in their seats. So it doesn't look great. And I don't know what they can ever do about it. Well, they're just going to have to keep selling more tickets. Like you said, there. I think they had a goal to be at about 75% capacity going into year three. And they're on, on goal for that. They're on track for that. So... I mean, yeah, it's 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 coming along nicely. Just it, it didn't look nice that the first few years with them probably only being at fifty percent capacity, and then only ten percent of the people actually taking their their seats outside. But you know, at the end of the day, this was that was a project that was, and people think that you know everyone likes to, to throw the sort of salt at the boosters and be like, you know, instead of spending money on a football only facility or doing this, that, or the other, they they spent all the money on the Champions Club. And the way it works is that if you're going to borrow money or get like a bond issued to you the way they do because they're a state, you know, university, it needs to be something that's being built that's going to generate revenue. Like you can you can borrow the money against the fact that like, yeah, this is going to create X amount of dollars for us. It doesn't work that way with like a football-only facility. You can't be like, well, we're going to win a national championship and then we're going to get uh, an increase in a- ACC, you know, uh, network money. It doesn't work like that. You have to kind of give them a direct, um, you know, a- a- evidenced approach of, listen, we're going to open this up. We're expecting to make this amount of money out of it. So, uh, that's why you know, that thing got created. I've been thinking about that because that is the case. Yeah, the the fo- a footballing facility wouldn't make revenue. It's just strictly for the players to be hanging out all day. Pampered, but what further so pampered? They, they must have a curfew. I would think most football teams are going to have a curfew, especially during a game week 
why couldn't they – so say their curfew is 11, 10 o'clock. They have to be back in their dorms or they have to be in the hotel or whatever it is. Why not from like 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., you open up the football facility to fans and make it a nightclub? And you get to run around, and you get to play with the ball, and you get to you get to get on the uh, you get to get on the floaty river or whatever they're going to have in that thing, the laser tag, all that stuff. You have an open bar, you have you know a dance floor, all that stuff, man. You can't do that. You can do that five nights a week, or and even on Friday night. You know they're not going to be there because they got a game the next day. Shoot, they're going to be out of town on Thursday. I wonder if Willie will do that still, the whole Jimbo thing where we're, we're gone on Thursday, everybody. You know, we'll see. You. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. That was, I mean, how much money did that waste the last two or three years? But didn't it win a national title a few years ago, or we don't care about that anymore? That's just five years ago, so it doesn't matter. didn't even happen. We, we, think, we think that them leaving on Thursday won them the national title. It's like the GPS. All that was made out of all those G, the GPS system and, and how revolutionary it was, and that's why they won the national title. No, nah, man, they got Jameis Winston. That's why they won the national title, and they had a lot of really good players. It wasn't because they got they got to Clemson on Thursday night that they won that game. It's because Kelvin Benjamin was awesome. He could have showed up. They could have he could have driven up Friday afternoon, and they still would have won that game by a lot of points. They get there, they get there early. They get their mind right. They're able to perform at their best. What happened? What happened the last few years? Why wasn't their mind right at Georgia Tech or because Louisville? Of, because the defensive coordinator didn't really know how to coordinate defenses. Hey man, well if he got up there early enough, he could have been able. You know, it just that was that was Jimbo. Just it, I mean, they cost a lot of money to ship 120 people to a road game, yeah. And then you double it because you make them do it an extra night. So you know, I I, I who knows? I might be Willie might Willie might send him there on Tuesday. I don't know. I just think that you know it had worked for the first 60 years of Florida State's existence. That hey, we'll go up Friday the day before the game. And we usually are going to win the game no matter no matter when we get there. And then all of a sudden, you got to be up there on Thursday. You know, it's got to be a little bit, little bit of a recruiting perk to come to Florida State, doesn't it? Like, hey, you're you're not going to have to go to class on Thursdays. You know, four months out of the year. <laughs> no, you will. You have to go to class on Thursday. You don't have to go to class on Friday. Oh, okay. And you get, you get to stay in a cool hotel room for well, an extra night every every other week. Listen, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I think the football facility that's also a nightclub is a much better recruiting tool. Corey, all I know is that in, in you know, golly, in, in 10 years, you know, when, when, the, when the national championship team comes back, they're not going to talk about the catches. They're not going to talk about the plays. They're going to talk about the memories together, right? They're going to talk about hanging out in those hotel rooms, staying up late, mm-hmm. joking, cutting up, making jokes. They're not going to talk about ball. They're just going to talk about the you know, game. you know, hundred percent. They're going to talk about what they watch on Thursday night yeah. uh, in the hotel room. It's, I mean, that's what we all remember. Yeah. Again, though, I think you're not you're not really given the uh, the idea for the football facility to also be a nightclub. Okay, all right. I mean, that's gonna that's gonna generate a ton of revenue because again, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be cool, and the students will get to use this these awesome. You know, obviously, there's going to be ushers there, and like, no, no, you can't. You can't jump into the pool right now, or whatever they have there. You can't. Uh, you can't get on the giraffe right now if, there, if it, there's a zoo in there. Um, the, the giraffes are sleeping, but you still get to hang out by the giraffes, or you get to hang out by the monkeys, or whatever they have in their zoo for their in their football mansion. People are going to love that thing. You just have an open bar, not an open bar. You got to pay. That's going to generate huge amounts of revenue. It might hurt bullwinkles. It might hurt you know pot bellies, but it's going to make a lot of money for the university. And that thing will be paid off in no time. Free advice given by Corey Clark. Time to pay some bills, though. Taking a break. We'll be right back. It's Wake Up War Chat, 97.9 ESPN Radio. You're locked in to Wake Up War Chat on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Welcome back to Wake Up War Chat, 97.9 ESPN Radio. This program brought to you by For the Table Hospitality. I'm Aslan Hajavandi. He's Corey Clark. And, Corey, your idea about turning the football-only facility into a revenue-generating nightclub, you know, I think one of the things they could do, and this boggles my mind a little bit, there's no gym. This is the day and age where all these gyms these days are all open 24 hours a day. There's like two gyms on campus that students can use, and none of them are open past 10 o'clock in the evening. So why not make the players' gym, you know, from like 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. or, or 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Make that uh, like students can go use it, but you have to pay obviously a big premium. That'll be part of the revenue generating thing. Or like you were saying off the air. Make it uh, like an observatory gym, right? I'll pay twenty bucks to go watch guys do some squats, right? Yeah, and watch them run forties and yeah. and do their rock climbing wall. 
um, and you know, a paddleboard. What again? I'm I'm envisioning this thing is going to have all the bells and whistles. They're going to be able to do whatever. They, they're going to have like an American Ninja Warrior course. Ooh. So you get to watch the players do all that kind of stuff too. There we go. They probably have like a a place where like a small plane can take off and land. Probably have a flight simulator. All that stuff, man. We're not going to spare any expense for this football only facility because we know that it's going to make all that revenue back because people are going to get to enjoy it too. It's not just for the 85 football players. Right. And if you're into that kind of thing, maybe you can take a shirtless uh, photo of the guys, like when they're, you know, lifting and you can, it'll cost you like 10 bucks to snap right. a photo. There's a lot of people, Hey, there's people on travel yeah. council that are into that stuff. Corey, I'm not saying that you or I, we're not advocating on it, but right. Right. Uh, like well, stuff. yeah, I guess that's, that's another option to take man, back to the champions club question real quick. I th- again, I think the biggest problem is I think it does make money. The problem is it doesn't look like it's making a lot of money because you don't see a lot of people outside and I get, I, and I really don't know what what can be done. I, I don't know why anybody out there would want to come back and sit in those seats when they can they can see the game fine from where they are, and it's air conditioned. So, but again, if you're okay with the optics of that, which Florida State I think will be as long as it's making money, then just know that's what it is. You know, I remember it might have been the Clemson game two years ago, the da- when Dalvin was so awesome, but even that game. The end zone uh, looked completely empty. Nobody. And no. I remember a couple of players, former players, tweeting like, man, what's wrong with Florida State fans? They can't even come and support the team against Clemson. And it's like, well, no, they're there. You just don't know that they're there because they're inside. So that's that's just an issue that I, I still think I think needs to be dealt with, but I'm not smart enough to figure out how to do it. Yeah, again, they've sold like – they're up to about 75% of the ticket sales they're expecting. Let them get to about 100%, then you'll get more people there. It's never going to be totally filled it's in. Never but, be it's going to be full. It just can't be. It won't be better. full. Ever. It'll, it'll look better. I think if, if yeah. they're not playing at noon, if they're not playing at noon against Delaware State and Louisiana Monroe – and the sun's down, you might get more people willing to kind of brave the elements and go watch a football game and not sit in the air condition uh, with a frosty beverage. Uh, with that said, let's get to another question, shall we? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, big fan of the show. My name's Jared. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. I just wanted to know who y'all think is actually going to start as far as the uh, two safeties go, because I've heard a lot of talk about Cyrus Fagan and uh, Nasrul Dean, and also I know um, – uh, they were talking about putting, uh, you know, one of the corners there, you know, kind of playing a star role or whatever. But I was just wondering who y'all think is actually going to start in the end uh, in the secondary. Like I said, big fan, guys. I, I really like Corey and Aslan. You're doing a great job, and I appreciate you guys. So have a great day. Man, that was Thanks a great way to end that <laughs> question. He really likes me, and you're doing a good job. Keep, you're doing a great job. So we, we, we complimented both of us. Keep trying, Adler. Keep trying. Maybe one day you'll be all right. Hey, he said you're doing a great job, so that was nice. That's a pick-me-up. And um, you know who else was from Mobile, Alabama? Was the uh, the Coker. great Henry Aaron. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah also, thought... Mobile, Alabama. Willie Mays was from Alabama, too, but not from Mobile. Anyway, I think he nailed it, right? Don't you think those are the two guys that are going to start at safety? Yeah. Nassel Dean, for sure. Yeah. Nassel Dean's all gonna, Nassel Dean has a chance to be awesome. Mm-hmm. And I think Cyrus Fagan has a chance to be pretty darn good, too. He has what they would probably call dog DNA in him. Yeah, those are the two guys I'd feel like. I mean, who else would really be in the mix for that? Like, I don't think A.J. Westbrook. A.J. Westbrook is probably – he's a serviceable kind of guy they have, but I don't, I don't see I mean, I think starting. he's in the mix. I don't know. I just – I would be surprised if he started over either one of those two guys. But I think he'll play some. And then I think the star, I mean, won't – uh, Brooks gets some of that. Don't we think to Kalon Brooks? I mean, in that in that kind of role, I still don't know. It, it makes no sense to me. And I'm not trying to say that anybody's a liar or anything like that, but it makes no sense to me in this day and age of football that you want to put four linebackers out there, or you want to make your star more of a linebacker than more of a, a, a fifth defensive back. It, that just doesn't make well, any sense to me because I don't think like the Kalen Brooks forever. I mean, he can maybe cover tight ends, but he's not going to cover shifty slot guys. I mean, but he's only like two hundred and ten pounds. It's not like he weighs. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Twenty five uh, pounds more than Cyrus Fagan. They're kind of the same size. It's not like you're asking Dontavious Jackson to go do it. Like a two hundred thirty five pound, two hundred forty pound guy. Uh, to me, Brooks moves really well. I mean, obviously he's got some pretty solid DNA up in up in him. But uh, you know, he watching him in practice, he moved well enough to me that he could cover people. But I don't know how many how many safeties do you have uh, like a good like a uh, who is the kid the Switzer kid at UNC. Yeah. And Florida State didn't have anybody that could cover that kid. So uh, Declan Brooks couldn't cover that kid. Well neither the could Kalen. Fagan, neither could Westbrook. The Kalen. Come what do, on, I, what Corey. do I keep calling him? Declan? Declan. Declan. <laughs> Declan? D Kalen? That sounds like oh, a, that sounds like a really good hardware brand though. Like Declan Drills. 
Declan Drills, established 1962. Yeah. So uh, D Brooks, I'm just going to call him D Brooks. Um, he can, I mean, I, I, I figure he has to, you know, he can do it, and he's aggressive and he's physical, which I do think they want somebody like that around the line of scrimmage. So, you know, it's a tough position, though, by nature. I mean, you aren't, there aren't a lot of Jalen Ramseys out there. So it's a hard position to play, but, you know, they seem to think, feel pretty confident that he's in the mix to play it. Yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing. I mean, you, you talked about, did you say, it was Fagan one of the guys you cited? I mean, DeKalen is 5'10". They got him built at 5'10". Or, yeah, 5'10", 210 pounds. Cyrus Fagan's 6'1", 191. So that's a little bit more probably rangy. I mean, I know it's Rangier, two, yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the person... But 2'10", isn't like a, 210 isn't like a lead-footed Dick Butkus. Right, no, you know, right. He, he can move a little bit. So, I mean, I assume Dick Buckus could move, too. He made a lot of tackles. But he's really good. Uh, he, this isn't like a slow-footed linebacker. This is a guy that's – the only reason he'd be on the field would be because of his speed. Yeah. So, you know, but, he, I mean, there'll be some times if they somehow get mismatched where he's with a, a Kenny Shaw type, man, that's hard That's hard to do. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a really tough position to be in, but I don't know how much better an A.J. Westbrook would do with something like that either. If he had gone through spring, I'd throw his name here in a little bit more of a – serious tone but carlos becker carlos becker to me probably fits in that that sort of spot really good um i feel like he's like quick twitch like he can probably operate really good on guys that got quickness and he's not small by any means but he hasn't been able to stay healthy so uh, it's tough to imagine him pushing those guys that had a full spring myers, myers too right myers has uh, got think, a chance and uh, i think i think the way it's going to be interesting that you you know, Flor- when Jimbo was here, it was a lot of talk about being uh, multidimensional, being able to play multiple positions. They did that a lot. They cross-trained, cross-trained a lot. Yeah. And I do think they're going to try that. I, I mean, I don't think that, that Harlan Barnett is any different. I mean, he wants guys that can probably play multiple positions. So I think some of these corners will be tried out at star and at safety. Uh, you know, I just think that you know, obviously the two corners, the two starting corners are going to be Taylor and Samuels. And then I think that, I mean, just me personally, I think those two safeties will be Nashville Dean and Fagan. And then the star is kind of up for, you know, we'll see. That's certainly up in the air. And this is a guy that you, he's going to be in the mix for sure. It is going to be Jaden Woodby. Um, yeah, you know, you're, right. you're a, absolutely right. That's he's going to play some. They'll, they'll figure out. And that's probably a really good way for him to kind of get his feet wet and, um, you know, acclimate to what they want to run here. So um excited to see what, what's in store for that guy because, um, he can play, man. He can he can definitely play. So well, let's get to another question before we go to commercial break. Gentlemen, it's your boy Gibby coming to you from the East Village oh, right here Gibbs. in Manhattan. Maxwell. So I want to say love the show as always. And in regards to the FSU baseball game over the weekend, people need to calm down. It's baseball. Things happen. Anyone who's saying that Martin needs to be removed, this and that, you're out of your mind. Clearly you don't follow baseball. You're just an intense fan who – really doesn't understand the game and how it works. Unfortunately, the best teams don't always win. Look on the bright side. We're not Miami, who's an absolute train wreck right now with their legend retiring. Also, got my flight booked for the Virginia Tech game weekend. Let's pound some tequila shots at one of the Ford table establishments. See you guys. Yeah! Well, wait, that's it. We're, there's no basketball breakdown. Where's our, He was supposed to give us our basketball. He was supposed to be our basketball correspondent. Well, we got that. Well, he'll save that for the uh, for the winner. Okay. Um, yeah, man, that's good. It's always good to hear the voices, hear what these people sound like. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the thing with eleven is, it's just he's right, man. And and it's, I know people don't want to hear that because he's been around for forty years, but you know, it's baseball. You, all you can do is give yourself a chance. It's a weird, it's a weird sport that you can't judge anyone just on one game. And again, I understand the frustration with the Drew Paris thing. I that was just a that was a bad move. What are you gonna do? It was a bad move. You don't win almost two thousand games by making a ton of bad moves. He just made a bad one in a bad spot, but typically he makes the right moves. And you know he's right. Miami's been a train wreck for two years in a row, and Florida State isn't. Florida State, you know, was a was a top eight national seed this year and was in the College World Series last year. So they're still relevant. And you and as, if history's any indication, they're always going to be relevant uh, as long as Eleven's in charge. You know, um... but. Maybe it won't win the national championship. Probably not. Probably not. I mean, who would you say is the best pitcher in Major League Baseball right now? Like, give me like one or two names that you would say best pitcher in, in Major League Baseball. Scherzer, maybe. Okay. Uh, Berlander's been awesome too for the Astros. So one of those two, maybe. It's funny because in that sport, baseball, it's still the same sport. It's baseball. But in Major League Baseball, 
Like your your postseason fate doesn't really seem to dictate the narrative around your career. And I'm glad you said Scherzer because I, I was pulling him up while you were talking about things. I mean, Scherzer's postseason record is four and five. He's four and five in the postseason. His ERA is three point seven three, which is almost a full run higher than his regular season. Um, right, Kershaw too, right? Yeah, Doesn't, I think yeah. Kershaw has pretty bad postseason numbers. Kershaw seven and seven. He's actually, I think he's the one at his his. I think his ERA is actually like closer to like almost two full runs. I don't think Scherzer is as much. I might have exaggerated on that. I'm trying to look and talk at the same time. But like those two guys, you could probably say are two of the best pitchers of this generation, and they're not exactly lighting the world on fire when they make it to the postseason, but that doesn't really hinder them uh, when people talk about their greatness. But for some reason, when Mike Martin keeps coming up short, um, it, it just kind of further adds, you know, uh, you know, more sort of vitriol to the people that want to see him gone. And yeah, l- listen, I probably shouldn't talk about baseball so passionately sometimes because I'm, I'm not the baseball guy. Like, I, I didn't play baseball. Like My father didn't play baseball. You know, they're from Iran. They don't play baseball over there. So we don't have a fine understanding of things. Not that they play football in Iran either, but I've watched enough of football. I feel I've, I've convinced myself I know a lot about football. But yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I, I just feel like it's such a lazy way to say things. Well, it's just baseball. It's the way it happens. But, I mean, to a certain degree, it's just it's the sport that's based around failure and randomness and it just, for whatever reason, hasn't, you know, the, the little ball going around the roulette wheels never fallen on 11 in the month of June for whatever reason. Yeah, and I mean, look, I, I again, I get the other side, too. Like, uh, there's been a bunch of great players that have come and gone through Florida State that haven't won a national championship. And there's been one constant that hasn't won the national championship. Yeah. I just don't know the correlation between the causation and the result. You know what I mean? I don't know that 11 has done anything to cause them to lose national championships. You know, on the same token, I guess you could say, well, he hasn't won one either. So he said he hasn't caused them to win one. Um, but, you know, I, you know, Augie Garrido won three, four of them. He also lost. I mean, Texas has lost like 35 College World Series. They've been out there. They've won five, but they've been out there like 42 times. It's just really hard to win in the postseason, but especially the way they do times, though, Corey. you know, at least in Major League Baseball, you play the same team best three out of five or best four out of seven. In college baseball, that's what you do during the regular season, and then you completely flip the script and change the whole context of the sport when you get to the postseason. And Florida State, for the most part, weirdly, has been really good in the postseason, just not good in Omaha. But they're really good at winning their regionals. They've won 10 of their last 12. They went on a streak where they won like 17 or 18 straight regional games after the after they lost the first game in Posey's last year. I think they won like – legitimately like 14 or 16 or 19 straight regional games, which is absurd. And it's just not that easy. It's not easy to get to super regionals. It's not get that easy to get to Omaha. But you just, you have to take advantage when you get there and they haven't. And I get why that's frustrating. Augie but Garrido, it is baseball. It's a weird, goofy sport. Augie Garrido, 19 years at Texas, eight appearances in the college world series, two championships. So two out of eight is much better than uh, oh at eighteen. I get it. A little bit. Uh, it's a twenty five percent better increase. But I I think Texas overall has been there like forty something times. But they've won, won a bunch four, of them though. Five of them. I mean, no, no, but they've also lost thirty five times or thirty three times or whatever the number is. That's a lot of failure out in Omaha. You know, just because the two thousand one team won it doesn't mean that the two thousand eight team wasn't a failure. Or however you I, you know I'm making up those years, yeah. but. It's either a failure or it's not. And, and most every team, well, not, not most, if you want to look at it just strictly black and white championship or not, every team is a failure every June except one. Right. And it's just hard to judge programs by that weird, goofy tournament out there. But I wish they'd won. I wish they had won one. And maybe if he's coming back for a couple more years, they got a chance to win one. And I hope he does get to win one. Last stat, then we'll go to commercial uh, break. But I... 35 appearances in College World Series for Texas, and they've won six. So so 29. So Florida State's lost it 22 times. Texas has lost it 29 times. So that's a lot of times stop, losing the College World stop, Series. Stop, stop. We're going to commercial break. It's Wake Up War Chant wrapping up the program on Friday, 97.9 ESPN Radio. You're locked in to Wake Up War Chant on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Your weekend is Creeping ever closer. It's Wake Up Board Chant, 97.9 ESPN Radio. I'm Aslan. He's Corey. Thanks so much for being here. We do appreciate it. The show brought to you by For the Table Hospitality. We're running low on time, so let's get right back to it. Some of the questions are left back on the feedback line. Here we go with another. Aslan, Corey, good morning. Wake up. This is uh, Marlon for Miami calling. I got a quick question for you guys. With the Lady Knows winning this national championship, 
Um, how much pressure is Eleven to de- to declare his intentions, whether he stays a couple of more years, or how much pressure is he in to go all in to win this national title? I'll, I'll listen for the answer. Thank you, guys. What up? Thanks, Marlon. Appreciate it. Um, how much pressure is he under to declare his intentions about uh, whether he's going to stay or, or how many more years? I don't know. This the, the whole succession plan thing to me, I just don't know how that would work. And then, you know, the, if he says, I, I want two more years, and I feel like that's going to be used against him, and then how do you go about getting a coach if you're not going to promote from within? So I don't know how much pressure that really puts on him. And, I, I mean – I don't want to speak for Mike Martin, but I don't know. I'm sure he's very proud. He loves this university. He's very proud of the Lady Knowles for winning the national title, but I don't know if that drives him any more than uh, his previous setbacks. No, I don't think it does, but I do think it's the perspective and it's a prism now that people, Florida State fans, look through like, man, how, how come they did it? How come they found magic in a bottle? The, the four, that was, I think that, that was the fourth time Lonnie's been out there and the tenth time they've been out there and they finally won one, which – you know, the, the College World Series has only been around since – the women's win has been around since, like, the early 80s, I think. So it hasn't been around since the 40s, like like the baseball one. So 10 is a big number. 10 was the biggest number of somebody of teams that have been out there that hadn't won it. And I just think more than anything, fans are left – because they don't have anything to do with each other. They're completely different sports. It's like it, – it's, it's kind of like watching – uh, blaming uh, – you know, judging Mike Martin after Krikorian won one with women's soccer. They, except one thing. The formats are the same, where it's a goofy format that's unlike anything you do during the regular season. But Florida State managed and found a way to find some magic and go out there and win on the biggest stage. And Florida State baseball team has never been able to do that. And so I don't I don't think it puts any extra pressure on them. I think, weirdly, it just frustrated Florida State baseball fans a tiny bit more to see the softball team find that magic. Yeah. It doesn't take any away from the softball accomplishment. They're two different programs. And I think Florida State baseball fans were extremely happy for the softball team. But I do think just a tinge more frustration. Like, man, we've been out there 22 times and we haven't been able to find that kind of magic once. Come on. The turnout there the other day was awesome. I mean, the amount of fans that came out to, to welcome the softball team. And, 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 the, and the last thing that was going through my mind as I, I packed up my stuff was just how many more people would have been here if it was baseball. And especially how many poor people would have been here if it was baseball and it was, it was Mike Martin who won it. Because say 12 years oh, from yeah. now they finally do it, but it's just some other guy. There's going to be the excitement, the joy, but, you know, it's just something that it, it just stinks because you think about how awesome it could be, and, and in that window is just, it's, you know, is, is it even open anymore? Who knows? Um, yeah, it's, if, it, if it's open, it's barely. And, I, you know, I feel bad that he's probably going to go his career without one. I don't fear nearly as bad for him as I do those Texas fans that have had to – go through 29 Jeez. failures in Omaha. I mean, can out, you guys. imagine I what can. that must be like? There we go. Another question. Ivan, Corey, Ira. Wake up! Hey, thanks again for all you guys do. Uh, question. If you were at a press conference and Jimbo Fisher is there and he has to answer one question from each of you, what question would it be? Take care, go Knowles, and thank you, Wake Up Board Chair. <clears throat> all right, thank you, man. Uh, do you want to go first or do you want to defer? Uh, no, you go ahead. I'll, I'll defer. Um, man, first question I'd want to ask Jimbo. Um, you know, maybe he'd, he would want to adopt me. That'd be kind of cool if I could like call him dad. That'd be kind of neat. Um, yeah, you could you could buy the Christmas trees every year. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, probably. See, so he has to answer one question. Um, I just, like what's the, give me the truth, man. Like I, I can handle the truth. I, I still don't, you know, we, there's all, you know, you guys, we did the whole Chronicle series, you know, back and forth, back and forth. But at the end of the day, I mean, was it just money? Was there, was there one relationship that could have, could he have, could have somebody in the, the power structure been fired and would have kept him around? Um, that, or when did he, when did he, when did he first talk to A&M? Like, you got to give me the truth on this. Like, I want to know when was the first time you were like, I'll go, I'm done here. Or I would have liked to know just if he could tell us just how much the divorce changed him, maybe as a football coach, because that's something I mean, we, we I can't feel talk like about. You, you just answer, you gave three or four different answers right there. All right, well, I'm you just one, get one. Buddy. One, you got to pick one. I'd want to know, like, give me the one person at Florida State that you just couldn't stand, and that's why you you ultimately left. <laughs> All right, I hear you. I feel you. I would, uh, I would ask him if honestly, because I, I, you know, I, I was in enough press conferences with him over the last ten or eleven years. 
I, you know, I, I know if he could answer it honestly and not in the normal stutter Jimbo way, <clears throat> and and I know he was answering honestly, I would want to ask him what he really thinks of Texas A&M now that he's been there for whatever it's been six months, yeah. what he thinks of that place. And was Florida state as bad as he made it out to be, Did, you know, that would have been like along those lines, because to me, man, that seems like a really weird place out there. And I don't know how he's going to handle that kind of pressure because it's going to be a different kind of pressure, not just the money, but those are weird folks. Those are weird, rich folks uh, that expect success right away. And what is that place like? Why hasn't that place been able to win since 1939? All right. There we go. All Those right. were a bunch of questions, too. Yeah. But that would be – that. May, I think that would be my biggest my, – my question. What is it about Texas A&M that it hasn't won anything of note since 19 39 And even then, that doesn't count because only white people played football. Yeah. So that doesn't count as a national championship. And we're getting ready to go to war. So Texas A&M has never won anything of note since college football is in its current form. Why? Strong facts. Big facts. 850-792-5730. 850-792-5730. Give us a call. And we'll get your questions next week. We had another question that came in on the Tribal Council, but it involves recruiting, so we'll probably defer to Michael Langston. We'll bring him on the show next week to talk a little bit recruiting and get to that question. Uh, but that's it for us on Wake Up War Chant. Corey, anything you want to add before we go? Guys, you know I love you. I can't say it enough. Uh, I love that you, you're with us. You're sticking with us. We're becoming a behemoth. Uh, this has been a great show. It's been a great week, and quite frankly, it's been a great year. We're happy you're on board. We love you. Have a great weekend. Enjoy your Flag Day weekend and your Flag Day week, and I can't wait to celebrate my birthday with you guys next week. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting, and now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.